Hi there. In this video, I want to cover the types of GPT-3 AI writing apps that I see out there on the market today and which ones that you should use based on, I guess, my expert opinion for what it's worth, right? Uh, there are two main types of AI writing apps that you'll find out there, the blank canvas and the forms-based approach. And you can probably guess what the difference is. Essentially, there's there's two ways of, of making use of the AI to help you write articles. One will give you a blank canvas where you, you know, you probably are used to things like Google Docs and Microsoft Word. You open it up, you have a screen, and you start writing. The other one is a forms-based approach where you pick a form, you fill out the form, and when you submit the form, you get the content back that you're asking for. So which one is better? I don't know. Let's take a look and I'll compare and we'll see. The blank canvas method is exactly what it sounds like. It's a blank canvas for you to write and then you call on the AI assistant whenever you need help. Literally as if there was an assistant just sort of sitting there next to you waiting to take over when you needed the help. Now, the biggest benefit of something like that is you really do get to write quite quickly. You know, you just open the you open the, the document, you just start writing. And when you need some help from the AI, usually it's just a button click away and it just takes over and, and just finishes your thoughts or finishes your sentences and paragraphs for you. Just creating a really nice flow and producing content really quickly. And probably the biggest benefit is that it's, it's just all right there in one screen. You don't have to jump around from page to page like you do with the forms-based approach to produce your entire article in one minimal screen. That's the, the best part about it. And so it gives you the freedom to use the AI just kind of whenever you need it, you know? You can blast through articles really fast with some with just some great productivity. You know, I, I can, I've, it's not unheard of to crank out 1500 words, uh, word, word articles in like less than 15 minutes. Now, of course, there's a drawback. You know, you have to learn how to dance with the AI. So there's a learning curve in, in essence. And until you get accustomed to doing it, you might have a little bit of trouble getting precisely what you want from the AI sometimes. And, um, you know, and, and that's just what it is. You know, once you start learning it, though, the, the benefit is pretty massive for this type of a tool. Um, but... There are some difficulties with it, and that's where the forms-based AI, AI writing apps come in. So these type of, uh, of apps are pretty much the exact opposite of the blank canvas. And what you usually see is a screen full of form choices, basically, based on the type of content that you want. Maybe it's a blog post ideas. Uh, ad copy, product copy, or maybe meta descriptions, blog post intros, um, just things like that. And uh, so the benefit of that is, is that behind the scenes, the the prompting, the you'll you'll often hear these tools call it training. Um, the prompting that it's sending to the GPT-3 AI uh, API is tailored to try to re return the results that are kind of specific to that type of copy. So if you chose like ad copy, for instance, uh, they would design their prompt in a way to try to return something that resembles ad copy for you. Um, and that's, that's actually kind of nice sometimes, especially when you think about the blank canvas approach, you could sometimes run into a situation a little bit of an edge case where you can't quite get what you want. You're kind of stuck in the middle of, a, of an article. And um, sometimes having one of these forms-based tools ready for you would be um, something you can jump over to and grab some content real quick to kind of fill in in the other form or in the other tool, I should say. So, of course, the trade-off, though, is that you got to jump from form to form, fill them all out thoroughly to get what you want from the AI and you got to copy and paste the results into, you know, paragraph by paragraph into a document where you're trying to kind of 
piecemeal put together your your end result article that you're trying to create and it's just time consuming compared to the blank canvas type but uh you know it, it can often produce results that you want so what i think is why not use them together you know why do you only have to have one um so there are a ton of gpt3 ai writing apps that are just cropping up all over the market right now and almost all of them are forms based and i think it's probably because it's easier to develop that and um you can kind of make you can kind of make it look interesting to users because you know what they're doing is they're basically everything is an api call to the gpt3 ai right and what that means is when you click when you fill out that form and you click that generate button it's sending something to gpt3 to get back the content that you are looking for and so what they're doing is they're they're building what they call tools you know like they're adding new tools all the time i'm throwing air quotes here i wish you could see it because it's not a tool they're just adding new forms and the new forms have a specific type of training or prompting that is trying to get back a certain type of content now i'm not saying that's good or bad um it's just it's not to me as a computer science guy and developer myself it's it's a little misleading i guess you know they say we added you know we added 12 new tools this this month like they, they added 12 forms with some specific prompting i only say this because in general you can get the exact same well okay this is ai you're never getting the exact same thing back very often um, super rare for you to get something back that's exactly word for word the same as um, a previous attempt even with the same prompting it's just not how the ai works but um, i'm just saying that because you can usually like i would say probably 80 percent or more 85 percent or more get the same type of content from the blank canvas type tool like shortly ai just by working in a single document and working quickly more quickly than trying to fill out forms and stuff all separate and so it's a little misleading because you'll look at something like shortly and it just looks like a blank canvas for you to write on and it doesn't have all these 16 15 32 new tools for you to try and use or something um when in the at the end of the day all that's happening no matter which tool you use is they're making a call to gpt3 and bringing the content back for you now there are edge cases which is why i say use them together primarily you would use something like shortly to write your content but then you're going to every once in a while run into something where you want some specialized needs you know maybe for instance niches has a uh, niches is one of the forms based tools by the way but niches has like a blog post outline form you could fill it out for a given topic that you want to write about and get back um, a list of like basically forming an outline of an article that you could complete basically what you would do is take that from niches drop it into shortly and then fill out your whole article and it would be a pretty good uh content pipeline in a sense and you know of course if you really want to be awesome you would then take that first draft that you finish in shortly move it into phrase and do some seo optimization on it before you publish so i think you can see that this is a really powerful combination so which one of these forms based tools do you choose there's there's quite a few uh, i'm not going to show you too many of them but obviously the blank canvas type there's really only one it's shortly ai if there are others in this category i'm pretty much just unaware of them even if i did find another one though i i doubt it would really compete that well against shortly they've done so much to make it the best and 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 actually i do work really quite closely with the developer and um using my background in computer science and ai cybersecurity, all this yeah i've been around for a while <laughs> i i basically feed them a ton of uh, ideas and the crazy thing is is that they've been taking them and actually implementing them and so shortly is just is very quickly improving uh even more than uh I had anticipated even 
And it's just, it's already the best. And over the next few months, it's going to just keep getting better. Headline actually is, is another one of these tools. Um, it's actually kind of a hybrid between um, a forms-based approach and the blank canvas. I, I guess semi-blank canvas because it doesn't really have a full blank canvas type of a, of a feel for you. Um, and it could fill in here if you didn't want to use shortly for some reason, but headline costs more than shortly and shortly is better in the blank canvas sort of category. So, um, I don't know why you'd want to pick headline over shortly here, but, um, so anyway, in my expert opinion, if you're looking for the best blank canvas AI tool that you, to assist you in writing and, and it fits really well into your workflows, I mean, the tool launches quickly. You click a new document. The new document is open almost instantly and you can just get to work right away. But when you want to pair it with something, you want a forms-based tool to, to pair it with when you need some help with some specialized content from time to time. That's when there's a lot of competition. You have things like niches, copy AI, conversion AI, headline, copy Smith, write Sonic, and so on. I wouldn't be surprised if there was... Pfft, 50 or something more of them out there. But so which one do you use? Well, obviously it depends. Niches is interesting because right now they have an AppSumo deal that's, I think it's $59 for lifetime access to the tool and unlimited generations, which is crazy. So if you can get your hands on it right now, if at the time that you, you're you watching this, this uh, video, if it's still in AppSumo, I would, I would probably pick this one. You know, um, the founder is awesome. He's doing a really good job of showing some, hit some level of transparency into the tool, producing more information to help you get the most from it, as well as improving the tool over time. Uh, the return on investment is, is well worth it at that point. If you can't get it on AppSumo, well, then it kind of becomes a similar contender to the rest of the tools that are in this um, in this fight here with it. The only gripe I would say is that the UI is a bit clunky and, um, but it is what it is. You can get used to it and get what you need from it. Uh, then you have copy AI. It's a great choice. The team works very closely with the open AI developers. It's a really solid product. I think actually, I, I mean, I haven't confirmed this, but I think that it's something like one of the developers of Copy AI's brother is on the Open AI team, which might, I don't know, might give them some insights to produce a better product than some of the others can. Not sure. Uh, it does produce some great content. It does require a subscription to access it, but it does give you unlimited generations. That's why I listed it right here, right after niches. And then you have conversion AI. Conversion AI is pretty interesting because it's it has a sort of focus for the audience that it's trying to target. So if you're a marketer and you're looking for producing marketing copy, Conversion AI is a great tool for you. They produce a lot of their forms specifically for creating like ads and commerce type uh, descriptions and things. Um, the biggest issue though with Conversion AI is it does use a credit limit, which means that you, you're kind of limited on how many times you can generate something uh, in a month without having to pay to get more generations. So that can be a little bit annoying, but if you're not, you know, if you're using shortly already for most of your writing and you just need some, you know, marketing copy from time to time, then Conversion AI can do that for you and it would be a great partner with it shortly. And then Headline. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to list these in the order that I would pick them, by the way. Headline is an amazing tool, too. Um, the, the output is fantastic. The UI is pretty nice. The developer is a really nice guy who's constantly improving his tool. And you not only get access to some AI writing tools like you're, you're used to from these other ones, but they also have some scripts like headlines that you can you can swipe and use or or email ideas like onboarding emails and things like that that can give you some ideas and ways to use them in your own products. Um, but, you know, like most of the tools that you're going to find in this category, it suffers from credit limits too. So it limits on how much you can use it each month. And, um, you know, a, a little note about this credit limit thing, it's, 
I understand why they're doing it. They have to really, in a, in a sense, it's because every time they make that API call, GPT-3 call, uh, OpenAI, who founded or developed and created the GPT-3 uh, model, they charge for it. And it's not a ton, but you can imagine if you are if you're one of these tool developers and you have thousands of users each, you know, punching that AI thousands of times, that can add up, right? So I understand they're doing the credit thing to kind of build in a system that protects them from spammers and bots and things like that that could decimate their system if they had unlimited generations. The thing about shortly. Shortly gives you unlimited generations, but they have a protection net built in. So if you, if it starts to look like you're using it in a really spammy way, it'll do some things to you to limit you. So, but if you're just using shortly in a normal fashion to write normally, like like a human would write, and and asking for AI when you need it, you'll never even notice that there is even any kind of a limit, and it just feels unlimited to you. And the great thing about being unlimited is that it. It, it, it frees you up to be able to explore or experiment. You know, you're not afraid to use the AI because it might burn through credits. And so in summary, if you're armed with two GPT-3 AI writing apps, like Shortly and maybe Copy AI or Conversion AI or Headline or Niches, then you have all the power you need to create content very quickly and sort of outperform your competition. Unless they saw this guide too, you know, sorry. If they see this, then if they take a take action on it, they're going to be on the level playing field with you. But full stack, if you can combine this with phrase, so if it was like phrase, um, phrase is the, is the SEO keyword optimization tool uh, based on AI that they produce themselves. If you have phrase shortly and a forms-based tool plus maybe something like Grammarly Premium to do some editing for you, and you've got everything you need to produce just beautiful, high quality, perfectly SEO optimized articles faster than you've probably ever created them before. You can do all your research for keywords and stuff in phrase, write in shortly, sub in the forms based tool if you need it, and then finish your first draft in shortly. SEO optimize in phrase, edit in Grammarly, and publish. It's a fantastic AI augmented workflow that uh, I think. Is, is simple enough, but thorough enough to make sure that you're you're hitting all the points needed to produce an article that is high quality for the web and people will find you. So that's the tools in a nutshell, basically. Um, I do kind of want to show you, this is shortly, uh, let me zoom in. You've probably seen this in some of my other videos. This is the blank canvas you get to just start writing and ask for the AI to do something for you. So let's see. Um, remember how I said that you can make the AI uh, do kind of what you want because you're in a blank canvas and it's, uh, it's kind of up to you. There's no form to fill out. And so you lead it to try and get what you want from it. So I'm going to try and do a poem because I've been seeing a lot of the tools lately, you know, a lot of the other uh, GPT-3 AI writing apps creating f poem based forms to like produce poems and so I'll say like for my wife and uh, let's just see what happens <laughs> um, oh I should say in the article brief I uh, yeah I said please write up a, a love poem for my wife sorry um, didn't mean to hide that and shortly what you do when you're writing is you just put something in the article brief. It's kind of a clue to the AI, what you're trying to write. And there you go. There's a poem from my wife. Um, in fact, if you want to feel free to steal it and use it for you <laughs> if you want. Um, anyway, so you can see that you can get what you want, even though it's a blank canvas and um, you don't need specialized forms for it. Uh, so that's it for this video. I hope that you find what you want from this. I think the best combination really is shortly and either niches and copy AI conversion AI, uh, depending on what your preference is and if you can get niches on the AppSumo deal. And that's it for this video. 
Until next time, take care.